people just stick their nose up and walk on by, but on by, but I just find that if you say hello to people and tell them to have a nice day, it cheers them up as much as it does anybody else, anybody else. That's probably what's wrong with this world nowadays, man. Days, man. Days, man. Days, man. When they sent me to prison, it didn't bother me whatsoever. Which you think it would, you know, because you take liberty away. But believe it or not, I always used to think I was better off sometimes in prison than out here. Because out here, when you're homeless and you've got no one, no one to feed you and that, do you know what I mean? And you have to come here begging and doing whatever. So. I come from uh, Burton on Trent. Uh, I was in and out of trouble from the age of 17 up till I was uh, 27. In and out of prison. Got a job selling the big issue, uh, lost that, ended up coming down to five ways where I couldn't make money off my regular people that dropped me. Um, don't get much benefit, so obviously I sit here making money. People are plant enough round here, and that's it. My family are all passed away, so I'm on my own, that's it. I used to work, I had a job, a car and everything when I was 17. Um, my dad, my dad's got a self-employed business and I fell out with my dad and uh, ended up just committing crime, shoplifting, um, fighting, drinking, taking drugs, everything. Ended up in Winston Green, getting a cycle then where you just end up going to prison, coming out, committing crime, going back to prison. I was doing it for ages and ages and then I just got sick of it. So I ended up like just keeping out of trouble. I'm just sick of prison, I'm too old for it now. I can't keep going in there, it ain't no life, you know what I mean? That's what I do, I just stop here. Just try and sort the side, sort the side, sort the side. Some people feel sorry for me. Some people think that I'm a tramp and I could do better for myself. They tell me to get a job. I mean, believe me, I'd get a job if it was that easy. But it isn't that easy. I'm not happy what I do, and I don't choose to do it, but I have to do it to survive. And in this world, you have to think you're number one, and it's only me and her that I'm worried about, and that's it. So, we just survive. Every day from every day, day to day. But a couple of, about eight months back, my knee come out of socket, so I'm waiting for an operation on my knee and everything. So, even if I was offered a job tomorrow, I couldn't do it. Because of my leg, like, I've got a bus leg. So, it come out of socket, and... Uh, <laughs> I've got a claim going against the hospital because they didn't treat me and they've still left me for nearly 10 months so. They sent me a letter through the post saying come for an operation, then after that I got another letter two days before I was due to go up there to have it done and cancelled it. I got another letter through the post for another operation, a week later I get a letter through the post and cancelled it again and then I haven't heard nothing else of them since so I've just got my solicitor involved and my solicitor's now still in the hospital. So until that's sorted out, I don't know where I stand with them. I've chased them up, but they don't get in touch with me, Hartland, so I leave it at that. Not me. Well, this year, I'm hoping, yeah, to get a place to live and stop doing this. You know what I mean? Maybe it happened, maybe it won't. Maybe it's fake. It's fake. Not me. Um, on and off, yeah, for uh, three years now. You know what I mean? I did have a property, uh, Hinden Walk in Harborn. Well, I was coming out every day and the council come around there, I thought I wasn't living there. One day I get back there and it's side text up and I'm on the streets properly, so. It's not too bad, you know. Like I say, I've got a friend that I stop at. Sometimes I don't stop there and other days I do. I've got a place around the corner where it's like a squat. Um, I stop there now and again. There's a couple of quilts there. I've got a stereo there, you know, it's not too bad. The weather, when it's like this, is terrible. It's freezing, right? Well, I don't, I try not to work, you know, I don't sit here doing it, because you can't sit here with a dog when it's throwing it down, man, it's not fair on the dog, and I catch my death of pneumonia, I ain't going to be no good to nobody, so, you know, I just try and stay, I try and work when I can, when it's nice weather, and it's not too bad. Yeah, I've got a lot of people that come past here giving me food for the dog, you know, and of course I make enough money to feed the dog. She's not, she's not underweight, let's put it that way. Not me. In fact, I'd say she's probably overweight. <laughs> I've had her two years. Eat some of that. Some dinner. Yeah. I think it's because the camera's there, but come on, she'll eat it. I know she'll eat it in a minute. Just don't. 
she'll move it. She'll have it in a minute anyway, so. Well, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that helps me here. Without them, I would be in a very bad situation in a bad way. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people, hello, love. A lot of people are friendly to me here and they've helped me out a hell of a lot. Do you know what I mean? What are you doing? She's growling. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Christmas with Sander, friends, had a nice meal with the dog, yeah, me, the dog and my mate, my birthday was Christmas Eve, I got drunk and had a great Christmas meal, yeah, and that's it, try and stop doing what I'm doing now, maybe get a job, labour it, I don't know a lot about much, but I can labour, I'm pretty strong, so. when I was in prison, yeah, I got some um, qualifications, uh, sitting in gills and reading textual material and uh, word power and that, but they were worthless. And my mum's passed away, my father, I disowned him, so I wouldn't, I'd class him as he doesn't exist to him, so. That's a self-employed builder. Yeah, he's got a big business, plenty of money. It's just one of them, innit? You know, we didn't get on and that's it. We all had a big argument because it's a self-employed business. It was split up, I went my way and my dad went his way. And my dad's now got a successful business and I ain't. So. I just don't speak to him because of his wife. That's my stepmom. Marilyn, I don't know. Her. She don't like me, I don't like her. And I've got to come, I might not want to choose to come out here and do it, but I've got to. I've got a dog to look after, I've got to get dog food, so I sit here and I make my money and that's it. I'm not a greedy person, I don't go over extreme. I know other people that sit here and do exactly what I do for drugs, yeah, and they'll do it all day, every day, seven days a week. But that's why I don't do it that way, because I don't take drugs. All I do is get enough money to see me through for my food and my dog food. If I'm stopping at friends, I have to get a bit of gas and electric. I can't expect to stop there for free. Do you know what I mean? I've got to chip in, I've got to get a bit of food here and there. He feeds me as well, my friend does, so... No, I'm on benefits, yeah, but I've got a lot of problems with that now, you know, with the government stopping the uh, ESA and all that, I've got to go through it all again, because I suffer with depression a lot, and uh, mental health problems as well, you know. The interview at five ways. I've been writ off saying that I'm unfit for work because of my mental health, even though I'd like to work. Do you know what I mean? Um, the fact of the matter is, I've got to go through it all again this year. You know, um, the government give me so much to live off, it isn't enough to live off. It really isn't. You know, my money probably lasts me the money I get, lasts me probably four or five days. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. I ain't had enough support from the government, and if I did, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. Do you know what I mean? Well, what they offer me ain't enough, is it? If it was enough, I wouldn't be sitting here. Do you know what I mean? But like I say, I can't knock people for helping me here because they've always helped me. Yeah, and then you just it's just never-ending circles. One minute you think you're getting on your feet, and the next minute they knock you back down again. So, have I got any children? I've got two kids in Burton on Trent. Oh. But I don't. Yeah, I don't see nothing of them. She's got my kids and I don't see nothing of her, but I don't really want to talk about them. That's the truth. Right. Okay. Not my kids, right? No, I don't disclose the bad it. No, I don't. I'm sorry. They've got their life and I've got mine. When they're old enough to come and see me, they'll come and see me and that's it. And they'll accept me for what I am. They know that I'm in Birmingham, but they don't know that I'm doing this. Nah, they'd be nah. disappointed in me, and I wouldn't want them to know, to be honest with you. I'm ashamed that I have to do this. It's not something nice to be sitting here and asking people for money. 
lot of people in the same situation that I am, and they don't do what I do, but I just do enough to get by. If I didn't have a criminal record, maybe I wouldn't be where I am now, so. But they're the mistakes you make in life.